I just realized I've never filmed just repotting a begonia before. I used to be good about making sure to go over the really basic things and somehow everything just started finding its way into the hour long vlogs. That's not very helpful to people who are looking for something specifically. So I'm sitting out here with this begonia that's not in dire need of a repot, but it will be soon. Like within a couple of months. In a couple of months, the plants will be inside in the grow space. I'm thinking right now, I should go ahead and just go ahead and move it up into a bigger container so that I don't have to fuss with repotting it when it's inside. It's just more of a pain when the plants are inside in the grow space. So here we are, a repot of begonia. Hey, what's up, gardening friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? You're doing well. I'm great. Keeping it casual. If you watch the vlogs, then maybe you will remember sometime around late July into August, something like that, of 2024, I took this beautiful begonia. This is a maculata double dot. You see it has a name because it has more dots than a regular maculata, hence the double dot name. It was in, I want to say, a maybe a four inch container. I'd gotten it as a plug from the Green Escape and uh, I waited too long to repot it. I wanted to repot it into something that looks nice and this is all I had laying around to do that with. But I said at the time that I probably should go something larger because I'm going to have to repot it again in a few months. And now here we are a few months later and it's time to repot it. Well, I have a different pot now. Not my favorite pot. This is just one of those cash pots you get with your bromeliads and houseplants from Costa Farms. I drilled some holes in the bottom, not perfectly evenly. Kind of Swiss cheese that thing, but made sure there's drainage. There's not usually drainage in these things. That's generally one of the most important things with a begonia is good drainage. Begonias don't like wet roots. They don't want the water to be pulling up around the base of the pot. So if you have it in a drainage dish, it needs to be lifted up. And they don't need to be potted all that often once they're larger. Because I'm growing this out from what was a plug, it's going through lots of iterations, right? You gotta keep doing it over and over again. If you go too big, then you have too much moisture in the soil and the plant rots and dies. It's been a couple of months. I doubt that this has fully established itself in this container. I would, yeah, it probably would be better to wait a few more months and make sure that it has really established itself before repotting it. But I'm just, I'm going to skip forward. Cause like I said, I don't want to do it when the plants are inside. So much more of a pain when everything is set up in there. There's tables all over the place and plants and lights and everything. It just doesn't work as well. So what I have here is uh, just a scoop from my aeroid mix bucket and I'm going to use this to blend into all-purpose potting mix over here. This is an all-purpose potting mix that has a lot of sand in it and some chunks has a decent amount of aeration but it's going to need more for the begonias. Want that soil to drain freely, be nice and airy, don't want it to clump up. Oxygen rich and moisture retentive. That's what these are going to want. Okay, that's all blended up. I brought a plate out here with me so that I can lay the soil out and give everybody a better idea of the soil composition. I think that soil composition with begonias is very important. The main issue most people have when growing them is going to be that there's too much moisture in the soil and they start to rot. So get in nice and close. See all that sand? See all the chunks? You don't have to use an aeroid blend if you don't want to. Just adding some perlite, the chunkier the better, will do the same thing. It's just going to help everything be nice and airy and oxygen rich and allow the water to move through everything freely, but also will still hold on to some moisture with the peat or cocoa base. Whatever you're using is fine. Just remember that if you're using something that is coconut base, then you may have to adjust for pH at certain times because it tends to be more neutral, whereas peat has more acidity to it. And I find peat easier to rehydrate. Uh, coconut, obviously more sustainable. You just have to, well, actually that, that depends on where you're getting your soil from. We don't need to talk about all that. Main thing, like I said, just make sure it's nice and fluffy, well-drained mix. That's what they want. <laughs> now I have to get this in there without spilling it all over the table. Maybe I might go back to the cart. We'll be right back. Like I said, once your begonias are larger and more established, they shouldn't need to be repotted all that often. It's just when you're getting them smaller, it's best to not overpot them, right? Never want to overpot your houseplants, period. But a begonia, alocasias, uh, colocasias, there are a lot of plants that just do not respond well to having a lot of moist soil around their roots. Okay, so here's what it's done in just a couple of months. That's pretty good. Again, this is not a plant that is in dire need of a repot, but I think that it's good to go ahead and do this now as opposed to waiting. Getting ahead of the game because it will be in dire need of a repot and not too terribly long and 
when it gets to that point, it's going to be more inconvenient for me to do it. So uh, go ahead and do that now. You can see in the container here, I'm only going with a pot that's about maybe a half an inch to an inch larger on the outside diameter. You can go up to an inch to an inch and a half and it would probably be okay. Want to make sure that you have room for about an inch or two of soil in the bottom of the pot. With begonias, you don't want to go too deep with the container because there's going to be more moisture that collects and sits down at the bottom before the roots have gotten down there to use up that water. And then you start to have issues with root rot. All right, finish backfilling that in the gorilla cart to avoid making too much of a mess. And the last thing I like to do is make sure to water it in with a root stimulator that's going to just go all over the table, isn't it? Yep, that's the way it goes when you're trying to get the soil settled. Tried to make it nice and end up just making a huge mess. Well, okay, I was going to show you how quickly the soil's draining, but <laughs> it's already drained down, so you get the picture, right? That water's moving through there nice and fast. There's some organic material in this potting media, so I'm not going to bother with fertilizers right now. The organic materials aren't going to do anything for several months, right? Those things have to break down. So using a continuous release, not a bad idea. I mostly just stick with the root stimulator at first, and then you need to wait a few months before you fertilize after that. I wanna get those roots moving and going. Something I should mention with begonias when you're repotting them is to be very, very, very careful with the root mass. Some begonias, maculatas, not so much, but you have the tuberous type begonias, and uh, some of the variations off of the angel wing begonias that have very fine roots and they break very easily. The plants themselves break very easily, right? You can take a begonia and just snap them. Real easy to propagate because of that. Getting off topic. You just need to make sure you're not breaking up those roots. That's why it's usually better for a few reasons to make sure that the plant has established itself in its container before repotting it. Uh, most of you probably aren't repotting yours like I am just for jits and shigs, right? Partially for a video and partially to get ahead of the game with it. You know you need to repot them when you're watering them frequently and they aren't responding to being watered and or when you start to see roots very clearly and evident at the surface of the soil and or coming out the bottom of the container. If they're in a plastic pot, you can usually just give it a gentle squish and squeeze. You'll feel it's really firm. That means it needs to be repotted. It, your begonia, if the pot's firm from the roots, it's definitely overdue. They don't have really big, thick roots that would normally push out a container, but I've seen it happen before. This should be good in here. I would think really until next year, until late next year, probably won't be until late next summer that I would want to bump this up into an even larger container, but we'll see how it grows. Maculatas tend to be really vigorous and they can get pretty big pretty quickly, especially once they reach this size. So it took it a while to get it up here and to get it to start branching out and everything. But now that it has started to branch out, not really branch out, but you know what I mean, putting up more stems in there. Lots more going on. This was just a stick when I got it. This will fill out very quickly. That was the whole point six to ten months and i would imagine this will want to go up into an eight inch pot this is a six inch and once they're in an eight to a ten inch pot with a maculata they'll probably be good in that for quite a long time if you're keeping them pruned back and everything when we get nice and big you could keep going with them because they'll get really tall the main point there though is that i'm not going to be repotting it again until i am certain that that root mass has really filled out this entire container because if you pull out a plant like you saw when i removed it from this container and the roots aren't fully developed and you have chunks of soil weighing on where those new roots have grown in and it'll pull on them, tear up those roots, and then you have a decline with the plant. And some of those begonias, like the tuberous begonias, if you mess with those roots very much, then it can be a goner. You end up having a downhill slide. That's never what we want when you repot a plant, right? You want to repot it to help the plant out and help it grow more quickly. You don't want to have a two or three month setback trying to reestablish a new root system with the plant, right? So just make sure it's time before you do it. And then a good general rule of thumb with a freshly repotted plant is to make sure that they're not going to be getting any extremes, right? So extreme light, extreme temperatures, extreme drafts. You want them to just be able to chill out in a more mild situation. So I'll be making sure this is getting just bright dappled morning sun and afternoon shade. 
with the maculata i usually let them get a lot of light but i'm gonna be sticking more around 50 percent of what i would normally give it for a few weeks and then once i start to see new signs of growth just return to what i would normally do with them which is a good amount more light than just morning dappled light all right hope everybody's doing well having a great day great life and just going absolutely beautiful for you comment down below say hi i love talking to everybody tips tricks suggestions always appreciated as a community i can't remember to say everything in a single video so let me know what I left out and what you think other people should know. And hey, just for fun, what are some of your favorite begonias, especially ones to grow inside? Maculatas, those are one of my favorites for indoor culture because they're just one of the easier ones and they're so showy. Just nice looking plants and easy to propagate. You can split these up and make more of them so fast. They're fun to give away. <laughs> Dirty pot. I tried to make everything look so good, but eh, it's okay. Here we are. All right, as always and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.